only on Peacock. Right. Rochester's Radio 95.1. Hey, good afternoon, folks. A little bit of show left. Remember, it's 222-9500. That's the text line, phone line. That's for any questions. We do that right before we get out of the way for a roll with morning glory. It's Earl David Reed right here. The lovely Megan over there. Super producer Pat way the heck over there. And remember, you listen to your smart device. You can listen to Radio 951 on your smart device. Just tell it to listen to Radio 951 on iHeartRadio. So... As always, we're, you know, we're lucky to be in this area because when every time we want to know something that's uh, that's like technical or, you know what I mean, it just, we, we've, we've got the area. This is it. We can see RIT from the window. Can we see from the window? Yeah, we can see from the window. <laughs> is that it? Okay, we can see from the window. But in any case, uh, we always have uh, top people from this area that are able to help us out. And uh, we talked about his, uh, the data breach. But like 500 um, million Facebook users have found, um, you know, their stuff was available on a, on a website for, for hackers. And, uh, and I just want to know how that happens and what's the chance of us having security against it. Right now we have RIT cybersecurity professor Jonathan Weissman, and uh, hopefully he can give us a little insight on that. How you doing today, sir? Hey, I'm great. How you doing? Very good. Very good. So, you know what, uh, first of all, the, your title is very impressive. I think I would just walk around with that title, even though I don't know what the hell you do. You know, I would just walk around with it just so I could people go, that's a cybersecurity guy. I'm not even sure what that is. Uh, but in any case, um, you know, so this is amazing. 500 million accounts found online. And uh, so how does... 500, 533 million accounts, all of them. Oh. Ew. Well, first of all, it, 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 I didn't realize there were that many <laughs> accounts on Facebook, but I guess it is worldwide. What do I know? So, um, so how does this happen? How do you think this happens? Well, it's a crazy story, as all these stories start off with. In 2019, it was discovered that Facebook allowed you to search for somebody by their phone number. So if you put in their phone number, you want to say, hey, I got this phone number. I want to see if this person is on Facebook and Instagram mm -hmm. as well. I'll put in the phone number and search for them. I remember that because whenever somebody would say something nasty to me on the text line, I would text them back and be like, okay, Robert. Ah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Well, you can't do that anymore, and, and now we know why. <laughs> That's wow. right because then you had people writing code that just simulated phone number after phone number to collect tons of information. Facebook thought these were legitimate queries. Oh, no. They were just numbers that were just being constructed together through software. And these people were getting answers from Facebook about accounts. Mm. And what, what sort of information what, what was being given back to these people who wrote the software to say search by phone number? Well, besides phone numbers, of course, now they had uh, birth dates, uh, locations, email addresses, a relationship status was wow. included in that as well. Jeez. And Facebook realized this, and they said, you know, we're, we realized that this is a big vulnerability, a big hole, a big flaw in our security, and they patched it up in 2019. But as the expression goes, the damage was already done. Right. So that information was already out there, and that data was dumped earlier previously to the, the big announcement over the weekend, but now there's a new database that sort of aggregated all the results and made it much, much easier to search and comb through to see all this metadata about people that can be used in potential social engineering to that. Mm -mm. You know, as, as horrible as all of this is, you, I guess you gotta be kind of right to pull it off. I don't mean to give that guy any credit, but it just seems that way, and, and so you're, Cybersecurity uh, professor, what what is the defense against anything as far as uh, people trying to get into your your business on like Facebook or even just online? Well, one one of the number one rules is never reuse passwords. There there's a type of an attack called a credential stuffing attack, where attackers are going to be using this database that was dumped. They're going to be seeing a name. They're going to be seeing an email address, a birthday, and they they're going to try those credentials on multiple sites and make some slight variations in terms of what they see, users that reuse passwords are so vulnerable because now it's not that they can be hacked on one site, now they can be hacked on all the sites in which they use the same password from. Right. So yeah, okay. never ever reuse passwords on, on more, more than one site, simple as that. Jonathan, Th there's... Those people, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. No, go keep finishing. I'm so sorry. Oh, I was going to say, it just exponentially increases your odds of being breached. 
Ugh. I'm curious because there's people listening right now who I know for a fact would be like, I don't care if my account's hacked. I don't have anything important online. What do I care if Facebook <laughs> has my my profile pictures? Um, what exactly are hackers looking for and how can they, they screw with you and, and screw up your life? Well, it's not just the account information that you have. It's the fact that now they could construct a profile about you, pretend that you are, yeah. pretend that they are you, or pretend that you are somebody else, and then get some information, maybe a bank transfer or some payment or some transaction to get initiated when ordinarily it wouldn't have been initiated because you wouldn't believe it was a real person. Right. Now yeah. and that's, somebody believable. Yeah, that's interesting because, like, you know, most people, when you talk about being uh, ripped off, they're for, they're, uh, Jonathan, their mind goes to money first. And they don't understand that there's more than money. In other words, like uh, your identity as a whole. Uh, you know, their identity, you know, maybe, maybe even their health care information, health care information can't be changed. Maybe it's something related to prescriptions for, for drugs, things along those lines right. or, or your health or, or how about the simple fact that you could just simply be blackmailed. Hey, we have all this information about your personal history. Oh. Pay us or just dump it online. We'll just dump it online. Oh my goodness. That's so creepy. That is so creepy. Yeah. Okay, well, I, you, now that you're scared us, we're going to let you go. Everybody go change your password <laughs> tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, change your password. That's good advice there, too. It, uh, uh, very interesting. I'm glad you uh, had the time to be able to talk to us. I know you're a very busy man. RIT yeah. Cybersecurity Professor Jonathan Wiseman. Thank you, my friend, and you have a good day. You, too. Keep in touch. Yep. Bye-bye, Jonathan. Will do. Smart, smart that, yeah, that boy. I never even thought about that. I didn't either. I didn't either. I was like, well, I don't care if someone's catfishing with me. They're not going to have the best luck. This but, is why I get these people. Yeah, this is yeah. right. Well, that's right. You know, because I mean, young. you know, you, they don't. It, it not it doesn't come down to cash all the time. Sometimes right. it's identity. I told you uh, about four years ago, some guy maybe you know, might have been maybe like five years ago, um, some guy filed for my return before I did. You know, that's oh, cool. yeah, that's, and, that's and then and then I spent almost a year trying to prove who I was. Oh, God, I'm worried about that lately. Every single week, I'll log on to unemployment and make sure that no one's filing a claim on my name. Yeah, because oh, yeah. that's a big thing, especially with COVID-19. People are filing false claims that are not them. Yeah. And I wish Jonathan was still on the phone because I man, because uh, so what happened once I fi- they figured that all out, uh, you know, they still gave me the money I was supposed to get like a year later. Okay, but uh, but ever since then, I get a PIN number. Mm-hmm. The IRS sends me a PIN yeah. number. So I go, well, why don't they just send everybody a PIN number? I think they, do they now? Because I, I got one. Did you get one before? Uh, you, you never had any problem with your, uh... mm, oh, man. Knock on wood. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I haven't gotten a stimulus in a year, but besides that. Well, someone <laughs> else has, that's why. Yeah. Yes, they have yours. That's what I'm worried about. Um, all right, let me throw some, some new what's happening at you. Um, we have another COVID-19 death confirmed here in Monroe County. 